Welcome to Build It With Jose. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to build a shoe rack bench, and I'm gonna teach you ways to do it easy and, and efficient and inexpensive. And uh, let's get it done. For this project, we're gonna use the dado blade set. We're gonna use a sander, a tape measure, glue, framing square, circular saw, a drill, and a counter sink. To start this project, we're gonna start by looking at the uh, lumber, the best one for, for our top. We're gonna cross cut it to size. And the dimensions are 78 and a half. This is gonna be my top. Now we're gonna cut our shelf, which is gonna be this one right here. We're gonna go 67 inches, and I'll show you why. This is our shelf right here. Now we're gonna cut the legs. I'm gonna set my fence at 18 inches right here because that's how high I want my bench to be 18 inches. That would be the normal height of a bench. I will cut the other leg. Once I cut this board, I notice they're, they're warped. And they're always green wood, it's always gonna be warped. I'm gonna put a soaker on the back on each board. And it, that means on the, on the back side. And uh, that'll help me when I put it in the day, it'll get it straightened out. Let's do it. Okay, that's that's that. So when we when we put it together, we have a little bit of uh, uh, we're able to get it straightened out. That dado right here that we're putting in, we try to put it in the center. It doesn't have to be dead center, but it, if it's center, it's better. Now what we're gonna do? Our next step is to set our dado set. Now we can use a scrap piece of wood to try it to see if that's the depth that we want. And what I want to have for the shoes, I think I figure, figure eight inches on there. Eight inches for the uh, for the space for the shoes. I don't want to have too much, but I know I want to have enough for at least some boots. We're gonna measure eight inches from here. So, plus the other half inch for the dado. If you look at the picture here, we need a, a half inch for the dado is going into the top. So that's why we need to go eight and then a half inch for the. At this point, I have to choose which which side I want for my top, but I, I decided this is the one I want for my top, so I'm gonna mark them from now on. I'll be working from the top, and that's, uh, that's how we're gonna do it. So I mark both of them so I don't have to stop, and then so we figure which side I like be the best, and I think I like this side to the top, so we'll go mark it. Once you mark it, you have a reference point.
there you have it. The other way you can do it is with a circular saw and clean it with a chisel and uh, try it till it fits it's the way I'm doing it in this video. So we're going to try to straighten these boards because as you can see they're pretty warped. So what we're going to do is I'm going to run them through. Basically what we're going to do if you put a straight line right here. Right here, we're gonna get rid of the war pitch on this because this is gonna be the my shelf right there. So I need to cut the high points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it through the table saw vertically. So for that, let's, again, this is my trial piece. I'm gonna be using that for every time. For this setup, you don't move the height. You just move the width of the of the fence. You don't want to move the height. The height is perfect right now. So you just want to move the fence back or or in or or out. This is our 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 uh, shoe rack shelf basically and, and the other one is my top so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do you know cut the high points here and then on the other side I'm gonna cut the center with the saw the way I was doing it here so let's do it We always want the, the crown like this to go up. You never want to do it this way. You always want to do it, make sure it's this way. So let's see how close we are. We're probably getting close. I think we can make it go in now. We're gonna do a little bit of sanding. For that, we're gonna use the sander right here because it would be really hard to sand later on after you put it all together. Okay, now I think we're ready to put it together. Always want the crown to the top. Again, like looking at the board. Now we're gonna, we're gonna glue this part here we're going to uh, glue it and screw it for right now. We're gonna try to make it uh, fit good in there. So now what I'm gonna do, I already put the glue in and I wanna make sure it's lined up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my countersink and uh, we're gonna countersink the screws. Now we use four of the number 10 three inch screws. Now we'll do the other side. As you can see, it's still pretty far apart. I'll use two clamps because it's too long for one clamp, so I'll, and then we'll use the other one because you never have long enough clamps unless you have a pipe clamp. To avoid using clamps, use kiln dry lumber. There it is. After this, I'll send everything and make sure everything is nice and even. So now we can go ahead and put the screws on that side as well. And that should keep it together. Now I can take the clamps off because the dado, it's already inside the dado, it's not gonna come out or anything like that. Now we're gonna work on the top. So we're going to 
set it up and I have it set up at five inches about on each side. Here I'm marking the bottom where my dado is gonna be. Here I'm setting the, the fence for my dado and it's very important to measure it because the dado set is not gonna be accurate if you just use the fence um, so then I'll try one I do one pass move the fence and do a second pass then I will try my board after that and um, I'll keep trying it until it fits once we go through all those steps this is the way we want it to fit now we're gonna try um, our top and see how it works Make sure the joints, uh, the dados are the right width. And it looks like they'll be okay. I'm gonna pound them with a hammer and a piece of wood. You don't wanna damage the wood. And uh, our next step is gonna be to do a, a groove about halfway the board, you know, three quarters of an inch. Uh, that's gonna help us for the warpage so it doesn't get too much of a warp. So now we're gonna go and cut it on the table saw, put the groove on the table saw. We have to raise the blade the right height and move the fence about in the middle of the board. That's what I'm trying to do here. There's that groove. So let's, let's get it in and see how it works. Yes, it fits. <clears throat> uh-huh, it should go in. So now we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some glue and we're going to, um, Put some clamps and then we'll put the screws after the clamps are in place. So now I like to set it on top of the like this here so I don't uh, always find the best face for for the for the top. Now we're gonna bring the clamps in. And you always wanna put the clamps on the bottom and then, then you wanna keep them straight, otherwise you can warp the, the project. But you, you can see how it's coming together just by a little bit of pressure right there. It's all the way in now. In this case, I'm not gonna worry about the, the screw holes here because it's going against uh, two walls, so, so it's only, so I'm not gonna worry about them. However, on the top, I'm gonna put uh, screws also. We're gonna use our, our drill here. So we're gonna countersink the, the screws. So we try to put it on the middle and go in about a quarter of an inch. So then we'll put our, our screws, number 10, three inches. Now let's see what it looks like. It's, there you have it. Our next step is gonna be make some, to make some plugs for these four holes right here. So I'm gonna make some plugs to plug these holes on the, on the top right here. Break them like this here. They'll come out. 
material, so what we'll do is we're gonna put some glue inside there. You find the grain pattern, just put them in. But that's how you make your plugs, just with this, with this tool here. It's called plug cutter. Our next step is gonna be, we're gonna put a, a round over on the whole bench on the front side of it. And to do that, we're gonna use um, a router. One of the routers I like the best is, is a port cable just because they're so simple, inexpensive. They're about $100, but uh, $120, but they're so uh, easy to maneuver. You can see the difference, bigger radius, it just looks much nicer that way. Now we're gonna stand it up and we're gonna do the sanding on the, uh, all the, the plugs that we put on there. Now we're gonna do the, finish the routering around the top. Now we're gonna start sanding all the radius that we just did with the router. And for that, we're gonna use 150, 150 grit sandpaper. I like using that because it's ready for staining, which is gonna be our next uh, process. In this case, I used the grooves and the dados just because I'm using a green wood. If I was using kiln dry, I probably wouldn't need all the joinery that I did. But because I'm using uh, green wood, I, I needed to get all these joints so that it helps the wood not to warp anymore. Now we're gonna start doing the staining. I chose in this case uh, mean wax because that's what I had laying around. And uh, I like to use a sponge instead of the cloth. A lot of people use cloth. And then you just do it with the grain, put it with the grain and um, try to put it cover a hundred percent of it and then you start um, cleaning it you try to take it all off whatever's left and then that's what it'll look like <laughs> 